people are getting far less feedback than they actually want. And so for those of you in the room that are managers, give more feedback. I know it's hard. It's hard to give, it's hard to give feedback, and it's particularly difficult to give constructive criticism. It, it's always challenging interpersonally. But without frequent feedback and without searching out and seeking out fre frequent feedback, you don't have a sense of where you are. And, that it's, and we tend to think of feedback as something that's important for, for correcting behavior, for improving, and it absolutely is. But it's also just fundamentally important for maintaining motivation. Motivation suffers when people work in a vacuum, and when they don't have a sense of how well they're doing on something. Okay, they just, it'll, the motivation just drops right out from under them. So very, very important to check in on your own progress. I know that some of you are not getting as much feedback from, from your leaders and managers as you would like, so you have to do what you can to, to figure it out yourself. Um, and check in on your own progress more frequently. Now, this is another question I get asked all the time, I really wish I had a better answer for, which is how frequently should I be assessing myself? How frequently should I be soliciting feedback or giving feedback? It's, very, it's, it's essentially impossible to answer that question. Um, whether it, in, in general, you can make some, some general rules, like for shorter term projects, things need to be more frequent, right? So that in, you're able to correct sooner. Longer term projects, you may be able to just check in monthly or even semi-annually if it's a really long-term project. But in general, more feedback tends to be better, so I would err on the side of more assessments. And, and, and also, just you have to make the call yourself. If you feel like your motivation is flagging because you really just have no idea what you're doing, then you need more feedback, then you need more monitoring. Um, why don't we do it? This is one of those questions that comes up again and again and again, right? If, if we are less motivated when we don't assess ourselves, when we don't get feedback for ourselves about, about how we're doing, then, 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 then why don't we just spontaneously do it? Why doesn't everybody look for this kind of feedback? And the answer is, well, A, it takes effort, right? You have to, to, to actually evaluate yourself. To get that feedback takes effort. B, you need to stop what you're doing. Again, locomotors hate to stop what they're doing. They want to just go, 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 go. And you actually have to stop and evaluate. So that's not something that feels natural um, or pleasant for everyone. And then I think the number one reason, of course, is that sometimes you get bad news. Okay? This is the thing about feedback. It's not always positive. Uh, so sometimes you get bad news, and, and that's not fun. Um, either. So what I recommend, and I think this is really, again, one of these very important things, is to schedule assessments. And we'll talk a little bit more in a minute about why this is so useful. But once you just sort of set in stone, this is when we're going to do assessments. We're going to do them once a week. We're going to do them every day. I'm going to check in with my own, you know, I'm going to take five minutes at the end of my day or ten minutes at the end of my day to assess where I am with every project I'm working on. I know that doesn't sound fun, but it's so effective. It's so effective, it's so useful, and it will make you so much more productive to take that time. So, so, so make a plan. Don't just say, okay, again, you always want to avoid statements like, I'll just do this more. You know, no, you won't. <laughs> We're creatures of habit. You won't do it. So you have to make really kind of concrete plans for yourself. This is when I will do these self-assessments so that I, I can kind of keep track of where I am and keep myself optimally motivated. Thing number three is to be a realistic optimist. Now, there is a lot of talk out there among people who talk about motivation. Not necessarily scientists who talk about motivation, but other people, about the, the power of positivity and the power of positive thinking and how you should be relentlessly positive all the time. And if you think negative thoughts at all, um, well, then you're just, in, you're just courting disaster, right? You're, you're setting yourself up for your own failure. And so I think there's a lot of pressure on people to, to adopt this, I, this kind of optimism that I think of as, and that other researchers think of as a very unrealistic kind of optimism. The optimism that basically says, you know, no matter what, it's going to be great, and everything's going to be fine, and I'll just picture myself succeeding, and then I will. Right? And it's, I wish it was true. I mean, wouldn't that be great? You wouldn't even need me up here if, it, if that was true. I would be terrific. I would be happy to stay at home. Just think positive thoughts, and it would all be wonderful. But unfortunately, what the research tells us is that this doesn't work. Okay? Positive thinking comes in several forms. 
And the, the kind of positive thinking that I'm talking about now, this sort of unrealistic positive thinking where you just sort of believe that everything is going to be great and you banish all negative thoughts, has many, many perils associated with it. First of all, you end up overcommitted to bad ideas. Okay? Again, your brain is going to use confidence or optimism as a cue, let's work on this. We're very confident about it. <laughs> and, and so you're going to end up wasting time on things that are fundamentally not gonna work out, but you're being so insanely optimistic about it that you're not realizing that because you're not thinking about what might go wrong, okay? So you're gonna waste a lot of time and energy if you're too po unrealistically positive. You're totally unprepared, and this is again something we find in, in, in our research. People who have, are unrealistically optimistic are completely unprepared for bumps in the road because they never thought about them in the first place. Okay? And then what happens, ironically, is when they hit these bumps in the road, they do, they have, they do a complete 180 and become completely pessimistic. Right? They, they fall apart. They become helpless in the face of these obstacles that they were certain were not going to occur. Okay? Now you're going to actually end up walking away from things that might have worked out if you had just hung in there a little bit longer because now you have absolutely no faith in your ability to do it because you thought it was going to all be great and flawless, and it wasn't. No plan B. Unrealistically po um, optimistic people are our best case scenario planners. In other words, they don't make plans for any other scenario. Plan B is a great plan. Plan B is something that is worth thinking about. What am I going to do if things go wrong? What am I going to do if something becomes more difficult than I thought it was going to be? Right? This is actually people who make plan B are much more successful than people who don't ever make a plan B. That's not negative thinking. That's just prudent. Okay? And finally, and again, these are fascinating studies. These are ones that have been done very recently in the last couple of years very much in response to this idea that positive visualization is such a great thing and all you need to do is think positive thoughts and banish the word impossible from your vocabulary. People love to tell you to do things like this. So what um, colleagues of mine at NYU did was they, they actually hooked people up to machines that measured lots of different physiological indices like their blood pressure and their heart rate. And then they asked them to do one of two things. They said, think of a goal that you would like to achieve and just either think... So one group, they told them, think positive thoughts. Imagine yourself succeeding. No negative thoughts at all. Just imagine yourself easily and wonderfully succeeding when you reach this goal. And the other group, they said, OK, imagine yourself succeeding, but imagine the journey. And imagine some of the obstacles you're going to have to face along the way. And then they looked to see what those two kinds of thinking, what I would call unrealistic optimism and realistic optimism. Again, realistic optimism is still believing you're going to succeed but believing it's going to be hard, believing there are going to be obstacles and challenges, and you're going to have to hang in there. Right? That's realistic optimism. So what happens? Well, people who have realistic optimism, who actually believe that they're going to succeed but think it's going to be hard, their heart rate goes up, their blood pressure goes up in a good way, not like the bad way, but in, in a way that basically everything in their body is signaling, I'm getting ready to take action. Right? It's energizing to think, I'm going to succeed, but I'm going to have to tackle things along the way. What happens to the people that just positively fantasize? Their heart rate goes down. Their blood pressure goes down. They go into a state that is remarkably like sleep. In fact, it's, what, it's why we call it daydreaming, right? And so in other words, their bodies are actually resting. I mean, they're just enjoying the fantasy, right? It's like a vacation. And so they're actually, we know from many studies, much less likely to actually take action to reach their goals because they, they, they kind of soothe themselves into this rest state through pure positive thinking. Right? So this is, again, something I, I, that I think really is a nice, you know, there are many people out there who are relentlessly positive and tell you to be relentlessly positive, and you kind of have that reaction like, that feels reckless. It is. You were right, for those of you who had that intuition. Okay? Optimism, absolutely important. That if you don't believe you're going to succeed, you're not going to. Right? There's truth to that. But don't believe that you're going to succeed easily. Okay? Because that is actually setting yourself up for failure.